Yup, another Baofeng budget-priced ham radio, and this one is pretty good. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the new Baofeng budget-priced radios here in 2023. The UV21R is available on Amazon, has an FCC certification label, and in my quick tests, had a clean signal, unlike the last two Baofeng manufactured radios that I've reviewed. As we'll see in a minute, the UV21R comes with the usual accessories, plus a USB-C cable and additional 15-inch flexible antenna. Like the radio, the antenna is orange too. The radio is advertised as an upgraded UV5R, so it has all the features of that popular model. It differs in that it has a modern case and feel with a large color screen. It also has IP54 ingress protection score. That means it's protected against dust and splashing water, but not water jets or submersion. The radio is USB-C chargeable in addition to its charge cradle, so that's also pretty handy. Besides the VHF and UHF ham bands, it will also receive broadcast FM stations and NOAA weather stations. It does not include airband, however. I had to go on a bit of a treasure hunt to find a CPS program that would work with the UV21R. I had almost given up when I tried a CPS from the Baofeng website listed under the UV17R radio. As you'll see in the CPS clip, it works but will occasionally throw an error when loading. When clicking continue, everything worked fine and my changes wrote to the radio without any issues. The color screen is set up with a dark background and modern light colored fonts. As with most screens of this type, they can be a bit hard to see in the brightest sunlight. That's more of an issue with all screens of this type rather than this particular radio. Let's do a quick tour of the radio and some of its features. So here's the UV21R box that it came in. It's a small radio, small box, and so let's take a look at what's inside. So let's start with some of the small accessories that come with the radio. Here's the, uh, the earplug style push to talk. It's a wired push to talk with a K1 connector, a little speaker for your ear, and then a wired push to talk so you can wear the radio on your belt and make use of hearing what's going on without being quite as uh, obvious as when you're holding the radio up to your face. This is a USB-C. It's got an A connector on one side and a USB-C uh, on the other, and we're going to use that to charge the radio. That's one of the ways that we can charge the radio. Of course, the ever popular wrist strap or lanyard that comes with the radio. I tend to put them on. I like them because I can be kind of klutzy when it comes to little radios, and so having it on my wrist when I'm using it uh, works well for me. Here is the belt clip, and the belt clip connects to the battery of the radio. So there, there are screws that are in the battery itself. And so you've got that available to you to mount the belt, belt clip. So here's the desktop charger that the uh, UV21 comes in. It's typical of the newer Baofeng chargers. Here's the US style plug. It's wired to the charge cradle itself. And then it has this little clip that plugs into the bottom with a label that's molded into the plastic saying that this is a UV21. So having gotten a couple of UV17s, the clips say UV17, this one says UV21, so uh, ended up with uh, a handful of these little cradle chargers, but uh, the USB-C is probably the charger that many of us will use when we charge our radios. The last of the accessories we'll look at before we take a look at the radio itself, 
Uh, first is this long antenna. This one is, is flexible, it's still got a bend from sitting uh, in the um, packaging. Uh, but you can see here it's got a um, socket side to the radio, SMA plug socket, uh, female side right there. It's about 15, 15 and a quarter inches long, and it comes in orange, the same color as the radio. Here's the other antenna that comes with the radio. It's also an SMA female on this. It's got the frequency range marked in there. Uh, and so it's a, obviously a much smaller antenna, um, but it, it makes it a little easier to carry around. And then it comes with a screwdriver. You say, wait a minute, what's up with a screwdriver? Well, the radio has a higher uh, intrusion or ingress protection score. And so the battery screws on. So it's kind of handy. They threw in a little uh, screwdriver so you can dismount the battery from the radio. Well, speaking of the radio, let's take a look at that. So here's the radio, we'll do a quick tour. We've got the screen and the screen aspect ratio is a little different. It's not quite as wide or it is as wide, but it's longer. And so we're gonna see a couple of little changes there in some of the displays. Like for example, the menu font is a little different uh, because of the screen size. Access the menu over here with the green bar, uh, access exit over here. Uh, VFO and, and memory mode switch here, A and B switch here, and then instead of separate F and up and down buttons, we've got a rocker panel here in the middle. Uh, the radio also has number keys, a lock, scan, and then you can access the menus by using shortcut keys, which is how these are labeled. And otherwise, so, you know, menu item number two is transmitter power, or it's the number two if you're typing in a frequency. Over here, we've got the push to talk, we've got a uh, three programmable side keys, which is a little interesting. Uh, and then on this side, we've got access to the K1 connector, which is pretty typical for these radios. It's a little tighter, a little heavier duty. Again, it's got some intrusion protection available to it. Uh, on the back, here are the screws and where you mount the belt clip that I mentioned to you here in the middle is a USB-C for charging the battery. And then here's that screw I mentioned that the screwdriver is for to dismount the battery. So let's take a quick look at the battery. So with the battery off, we see that it's labeled the BL21UV. It's high capacity and it's an 8.4 uh, charge voltage. These are two cell LiPos, so it's a 7.4 nominal voltage for this battery. And then over here, you can see that uh, we've got the internal sticker, which is, includes the FCC ID number and the serial number for the radio itself. So when you get the screw back in and the battery on tight, um, that's not only to make a good electrical connection, but also uh, to keep this seal tight for the ingress or intrusion protection. So at the top of the radio, we've got the on-off switch, the ever popular flashlight LED, and an SMA connector. This one is the male or the plug side on the top of, of this radio. So that's a quick tour of the UV21R. So let's do a power on tour of our UV21R. First, we'll turn it on. Got the same voice that we're used to, a female voice. Uh, and we've got the display. Now there's a couple of buttons here. We'll point out the VFO and memory button uh, will change from VFO or ch to channel mode. And right now there's a little red carrot right there that shows that the bottom is active. If I want to make the top active, I'm going to press the AB button. Now the carrot moved over there. And so I've got VFO or, M or memory mode. I press that. Frequency mode. Now I've changed to frequency mode. Channel mode. And now I move back to channel mode. Now above there, you can see we've got a couple of uh, icons and there are a couple of icons that you can might see across the top. In this case, the H means high. You can see that the lower one, the power level is low. And in this case, the little circle with a C in it means that there's a CTCSS or DCS code set for that particular channel. So if you're having trouble hearing, um, uh, that little icon is gonna be helpful to you to identify uh, what is happening and what is going on. Before we go into the menu, let's take a look at some of the buttons over here and what they do. We've got the push to talk, and then we've got three programmable buttons here, which is a little different from other Baofeng radios. The front, the top button, a short click goes to the FM mode where you can use the buttons 
uh, to dial in FM radio station. Another short click turns it off. A long click goes into monitor, which basically breaks the squelch. The middle button, short click, turns on the flashlight. Another click turns on the flashing flashlight or the strobe. And then a third will turn it off. A long press on the center one moves you into search mode. So if there's another uh, radio broadcasting or if you're holding it yourself and you just want to clone that station, it will look for another radio and it'll return the frequency in the CTCSS uh, right there. We can press the return right there to move out of that mode. And then the lower button quick will uh, quickly change the power. So you see it changed to L up there. Another quick press changes to high. And so that's very handy. Uh, and then when we press it long, it turns on the alarm and another long press will turn the alarm off. That goes through most of the buttons here. Let's take a quick look at the menu. We'll get enter menu by pressing the green button. And you can see because of the aspect ratio of the radio screen that the font's a little different. It's a little smaller. Uh, to go to the various items, items zero through um, nine, uh, you can just press the keyboard. So we'll go back in here. If we want to go into uh, backlight. Uh, we can just press six and it goes to backlight. That also works if we want to go to one of the higher numbered menu items. So item number 45 shows the firmware and the hardware for this particular radio. So that's handy. As we go down, we can have a stopwatch function on, power on, password, reset, and then just the usual uh, menu items that you're used to seeing on these little Baofeng radios to include some DTMF stuff, as well as setting your CTCSS and DCS codes, offsets, and that kind of thing for programming repeaters off of the radio faceplate. And then we can press return to exit the menu. So that's a quick power on tour of the Baofeng UV21R. Lots of folks are interested in radio power output. Here's a clip of what you can expect from the UV21R. Okay, so we're gonna do a power test real quick here. So we've got the uh, radio connected up to the MFJ 874. We've got it on the five watt range and we've got it on forward and we've got low power. So let's see what we get on low power right now. We're reading on the lowest arc and we're reading at about three watts, three watts. So we're on high power now, here we go, high power. Four and a half watts, four and a half watts and the uh, VHF range. Let's switch up to the UHF range and see what we get there. So here's low power on the UHF range. It's about 1.2 watts. And here's high power. And it looks to be about three and a half watts. So those are the power outputs on the VHF and the UHF range. Here's a look at, or perhaps better said, a listen to the radio's receive and transmit sound quality. Receive test, receive test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Test, test, test. Transmit test, transmit test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Transmit test, test, test. Test out, AA7, Juliet Mike. Now, let's take a quick look at the CPS. This is not a tutorial, but will give you an idea of what you can expect. One of the frustrating things I found about the UV21R is finding the CPS. As you can see, I did find it, but it was quite a search. What we're looking for is on the Baofeng website, and it is listed for the UV17. It's, and so you're looking for the T6 UV series uh, EN CPS, I assume EN means English. And so that's what we have here. And I have it connected to my radio. So to use it, uh, we're, we're going to be making use of some of these drop down menus. They're the typical Windows drop down menus file, open, save, program, read, write, settings, port, uh, tools, and so forth. 
So first we're going to go to the settings. We're going to go to the port. We're going to go to COM4, which I already looked in my device manager. And so I know I'm using COM4 with this particular programming cable. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to program, or I can use this icon here. And I'm going to read from the radio. I get a dialog box. I'm going to press start. The radio has gone into programming mode, and you can see that the read is occurring with the progress bar. It says finished. And so you can see the programming that I have done already. The other thing that I can do, I can go to Windows and I can choose what I want to look at. So I'm looking at the channel list now. If I want to go to VFO mode, I can do that. And this is where my VFO A and B is going to come up if I go into VFO mode or the last number I had. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is functions. So I'm going to go up here into Windows Function and click Continue. Not sure why I got that error, but in any case, uh, I've got the function menu came up. Looks like a couple things didn't transfer. So I'm going to set my squelch to three. I'm going to set my timeout timer to 105 seconds. My save mode, I'm going to turn on. Uh, the alarm is going to come on just slightly before the um, it times out. And I've got all these typical things here. Uh, the language, the scan mode, I've got the time operations as opposed to carrier operations. I've got my display type for A is name. I've got my display in B is name. I want a, them to come up in channel mode. So I've got them both in channel mode. And these other things that are all part of the, the normal functions for the radio. Now with that done, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to save. And I, when I do that, I just give it a name on a place where I store my uh, code plugs. And usually it's the date. So if I were to save this, I would save it today as 2023-1016, which is the date today. And then I might stick a label on it, UV21R, so I'm sure I know the radio that it's for. Well, with that all done, then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go to Write. I'm going to Start. The radio moved back to program mode, and it is finished writing. The radio rebooted, and so I'm good to go. Now, one caution on this, and that is here in Tools, you can change the power on picture, and this is really pretty handy. You have to change it back to the COM port you're using, and then if you put in an image of this size uh, for the UV-17, it'll work. However, the UV21R has got a different screen size. So if you put a 160 by 128 image in this little box and import it to the radio, it'll go in just fine, but it won't display because it's the wrong dimensions. And you're not able to change the dimensions at least easily here in the CPS. So I would caution against importing the uh, picture in the UV21 using this software. But the other changes you can make and it works just fine. All in all, the UV21R is a pretty nice radio in the budget category. It checks all the boxes feature-wise and seems to be solidly built to handle normal amateur activities. As with most Baofeng radios, the low price makes this a good choice for the new ham or for someone looking for an inexpensive radio to throw in the car or go bag. USB-C charging adds to its versatility, and the styling has a modern vibe to it. If you're looking for a budget HT, the UV21R is certainly one to consider. Be on the lookout for my best of 2023 ham HT videos coming out soon. In the meantime, join me over here for a review of a similar radio that's a bit more expensive, but with similar features. Again, Thanks for watching and 73.